Brett Boone and then Edgar Martinez got it. 4 nothing. just 14 pitches into the game. First four guys score. You can't do any better than that. Make it 4 nothing. Efficient Seattle Mariner attack in the first. Top of the fourth, it's 4 nothing. A couple of tribe on the corners. But Jamie Moyer, the other 38-year-old left-hander pitching the game, gets Jim Tomey swinging to get out of it. Bottom of the fifth, same score. David Bell busts out the whooping stick. Solo shot makes it 5 nothing. Seattle. Finley last to just four and a third, giving up five earned on five hits. Top of the seventh, Jess Nelson coming on with two men on and nobody out. But Marty Cordova grounded into the 6-4-3 rally killer. Ellis Burks would eventually score to make it 5-1. But that was the final score as the Mariners even up this series, getting five runs on just six hits. Jamie Moore getting the win, six innings pitched, just giving up the one earned. Game three is Saturday. The starters, Aaron Seeley against CC Sabathia. That's a huge game there. The Yankees and A's just underway. Andy Pettit got out of the top of the first unscathed, even though the A's put two men on. Tim Hudson will be striding to the mound as we speak to take on the New York Yankees. Oakland has won seven straight over the Yankees, including the regular season games they played this year and game one that occurred last night. Over to hockey, the Islanders and the Devils pick things up. First period, Islanders on the power play. Adrian O'Coin beats Martin Brodeur for his first of the year. And how about those New York Islanders? It's 1-0. Later in the period, Brian Rafalski finds Jason Arnott in front. The one-timer past Garth Snow. It's his first of the year. We're tied at one shortly thereafter. Peter Sikora coming down, working the wrister. I'm told it's an incredible wrist shot. We'll, just, we'll see. Not bad. First of the year, 2-1 New Jersey. And Long Island evening things up. Just moments ago, Alexei Yashin on the power play beats Brodeur, and this hockey game is tied. No, it's not. It's 3-2, I'm told. It made it 3-2. How about the New York Islanders? They're coming out. They're looking to become the first team in NHL history to open the season with four straight road wins. How about that? It's 3-2 with 13 and a half minutes remaining in that hockey game. Moving on to Carolina, the Hurricanes and the Leafs. Tom Barrasso giving up the long rebound of Shane Corson, his first of the year. Toronto up 1-0. Later in the first, Joseph Fasonic. Vonisek, pardon me. The shot on net, Bates Battaglia, his first of the season. Battaglia tallies to make it 1-1. Later in the second, Canes in the power play, Sammy Kapanen pounces on the loose puck. His third of the season makes it 2-1. Later in the period, Michael Renberg. The new acquisition, nice pass to old Leaf Matt Sundin. We are tied at two. That was your score going in the second intermission, and uh, oh, it's the third period underway. That's still the score. Toronto's won two straight over Carolina. In St. Louis, getting ready for that big Cardinals-Arizona game. They're playing a little hockey. Blues up 3-2 to two on the Kings. St. Louis has won six of its last nine home openers. The Predators up one nothing at the first intermission. Vladimir Orsog, his first power play goal of the year. It's his first goal, period. It's one nothing. The Blackhawks and Coyotes, middle of first period, were scoreless. Chicago won three and one in its last five home openers. And coming up later, I will do Sports Center with Chris Berman. We'll be along. We will update you on the Yankees Oakland Athletics game that's still scoreless. And update you on everything that went down in Seattle. And Michael Jordan taking the court for the first time as a Washington Wizard, not in a game that counts, but in a game. It's a preseason game going on in Detroit that's following Maryland and Georgia Tech. Terp is up 14-0. Anybody in the state of Georgia who thinks these Terps aren't for real, well, clearly they do now. Chris Fowler, Rodney Gilmore, and Mike Godfrey take it the rest of the way. Our son was studying to be a rocket scientist, but now he has a position here in the stadium. Hey, Dad. Son, I'm so proud. How about serving me up one of those frost-brewed Coors Lights? Sure, Dad, but first there's something I need from you. I know, son. I know your mom told me. I have to show you more affection. You actually need to show me your ID. What? 21 means 21. No ID, no Coors Light. But he's old enough to be your father. <laughs> like I haven't heard that one before. It's like the tooth fairy thing all over again. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To 
find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. The Home Depot is driving down the cost of home improvement. Now is the time to buy carpet at the Home Depot. Choose from over 3,000 styles, colors, and textures. And right now, get the carpet pad free with installation. Plus, you'll have no payments and no interest to paid by spring 2002 when you use your Home Depot consumer credit card. America's best brands all at the guaranteed low price. You're going to be floored by the savings at the great carpet event. Going on now at the Home Depot. Sports Center in game. This halftime report is presented by Keystone Light. Always smooth, never bitter. And welcome back. Terrapins 14 zip over the Jackets. Welcome back to Sports Center in game. Well, the first time that Fresno State made a trip to the state of Colorado, they were kind of an unknown team. We warned you they'd be dangerous, and they were beating Colorado. Now they return to the state of Colorado to go to Fort Collins, take on Colorado State as a 10th ranked team, one of the 18 unbeatens in major college football. David Carr and company set to try to pick apart a secondary for CSU that's been a little bit troubled. Now, Fresno State has played what looked like a yeah, pretty tough non-conference schedule at the beginning of the season, and the Buffalo win still looks pretty good. Oregon State and Wisconsin have been yeah, less than expected this year, to say the least. Colorado State also less than expected. Utah State is winless, and they go into that whack schedule. So, right now, Fresno State Ranked number 10, they really haven't moved up too much in the polls, even though some teams ahead of them have lost. And the BCS, when they come out, will not put Fresno State where they want to be. Should they be in the top six if they can run the table, go undefeated, get in a big bowl game? You're asking me. I'm asking you first. Yeah, they <laughs> definitely should be in the top six. And if they're not in the top six and they don't play in a BC Bowl, if they win the rest of their games, there ought to be an investigation. I'm going to call for one. <laughs> you want an investigation? They definitely should be in there. They've beaten everybody you put on their schedule. See, they beat the, the a Pac-10, Big 12, Big no, 10 team down, on the road. Down. The got, problem is they're they in the whack. They can't help their teams are going south on them. No, they're, they're in the whack. And so well, what they're going to have to do in order to move up is they got to win impressively. They got to get style points because they won't play the kind of competition that's out there for the other conferences. So people who are voting will be looking for them to dominate their conference, and that means getting big wins. When did you become the champion of the little guy here all of a sudden? What do you mean they don't pay? They play the <laughs> schedule that was put in front of them. We'll see how the BCS numbers shake out. Let's not get it stirred up too, too quickly here. The BCS standings will come out after the games the week of October 20th. Push back because of all the postponed games. Right. That's a pretty okay. uneventful week. So the games that happen this Saturday really are important. We have the bootleg BCS numbers, and we don't wait for the official numbers. And here's how it would stand as of today. This would be very close. Oklahoma and Florida, very strong in the computers. UCLA ranked number one in four of the seven computers, so that counteracts a little bit lower poll rating. South Carolina up there, you know, Lou Holtz says it's ridiculous that this team is even ranked in the top ten of the polls. The computer loves them even more than the pollsters. you got them up there at number five because of wins against Georgia and Alabama and, and the like. But uh, the teams that are not there, Miami ranked 13th. You realize that you toss out the high and the low computers, you take the other five and you average them, and Miami would be 23rd in the average computer. And that's a big uproar, but their schedule really has been weak, and that's going to change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's not their, their fault. You know, Miami played the schedule that they had, Coach, and that's good for them. It's not their fault Penn State didn't turn out to be a good team this year. They didn't have anything to do with that. Now, the problem I have, though, right now is that the BCS didn't release these numbers because... I think they were embarrassed by what the numbers would show. Now, they should have postponed this back when the games were canceled a few weeks ago so that it would have been okay and everyone would have just bought into that. But holding it to now, I think it's a problem because we all know it's the end of the year that counts, not right now, but they should have made this known sooner. I have a problem with all computers. Uh, the only computer I'm going by is my own eyes. Uh, and I've seen Florida, and Florida's number one. I've seen Oklahoma, they're number two. I've seen UCLA, they're number three. I've seen Nebraska, they're number four. And you'd put Miami five, Virginia Tech, and Fresno tied for six. So that's Godfrey the way power it, rating. That's, that's, it. It. that's just what we need is another ranking system. We'll get you to do a Miami game, though. And check out the Canes. I mean, look at them against them the Knowles. Penn State. State, Pittsburgh, well, Rutgers, Troy State, you know, they... What about they, Fresno they, State? Uh, they, they're okay. not on their schedule. They're not the margin on last year, FSU over Miami, was .32. If Miami stays unbeaten, but there are two other teams from major conferences unbeaten, 
they will stay ahead of Miami. You're going to have another controversy. But it's early. We don't want to panic anybody, that kind of thing. Yeah, we a do. lot can happen. Yeah, we now. do. A lot can happen. Hey, a lot happened here in Georgia Tech's first series. It's a fumble. Rumbling in is E.J. Henderson, 14-zip Frisians, guys. You know, at Del Taco, we got something Taco Bell doesn't have. It's a spicy chicken burrito. Freshly grilled chicken, slow-cooked beans, and a spicy green sauce. Del Taco has it. They don't. And we're letting everyone know about it. Spicy chicken burrito! <laughs> People love the pepper, man. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Just so cute and cuddly. <laughs> Kids especially love it. You just want to hug him. That's the thing. You just want to hug him and hold on to him. Cox at Home High Speed Cable Internet Service will make you smile. It's always on, so you never have to dial up to connect. And it's lightning fast, so you can fly from site to site in no time. Plus, with fast professional installation, it's no wonder at home is the number one high speed cable internet service provider in the world. Cox at Home. The internet comes to life when it's at home. Get free installation with Cox at Home Quick Connect. Call 602-795-6701. This is Sports Center in Game, the Keystone Life Halftime Report. Right, welcome back. Time now for Hidden Video. It's Morris Brown and Gardner Webb. They both sound like, like old times blues musicians, but they hook up here. We've had a little bit of a theme of defensive touchdowns of longer than 100 yards. Keep your eye on the handoff right here. The ball's going to pop loose. Yeah, watch the safety. Watch the handoff. This is gift wrapped to Jim Maxwell. Maxwell smart of Gardner Webb. Right place, right time. Not going to break any 100 meter speed records. <laughs> Rumbling, bumbling, eventually gets in the end zone. Gardner Webb wins it 38 15. Now, you recall last week, if you're, if you're regular here, Dayton and Duquesne. The Duke's driving, but. Neil Lobig has the pass tip in the end zone. There's Mark Bad. Kasmer, four yards deep. Bad he luck. was slow last week, hadn't gotten any yeah. faster this oh, yeah. week, but it's a 104-yard defensive touchdown right there. Same result. It's a fame there, right? They brought three back for touchdowns. Now, this past Saturday, Duquesne at Georgetown. At the time, the game on 13, an interception return, 346 to be played. The Dukes' Earl Belisario lines up, it's blocked. It's recovered. Look at the assistant coach bottom of the screen. Now, he's faster than the player. <laughs> Shows you not in Division 1A. But give him credit. They return the block PAT. And the touchdown. Georgetown wins it 15-13. As Pittsburgh native Vino Cook would say, hot believable that Duquesne keeps blowing games like this. <laughs> I Maybe, love it. Well, we'll have him back next How week. How about the speed, though? When getting the assistant coach beats the player, Mike, bad side. And he was wearing headsets and had his arms over his head. They're getting a lot of publicity. <laughs> <laughs> you keep blowing games, we're going to put you on every week. But you got to get players faster than the assistant coach. Kelly Campbell, all-time reception record for Georgia Tech, but the Jackets offense empty in the first half. Coors Light. Oh, check her out. Hey, suck it in. Coors Light. I'll have one. <gasps> Me too. Think three. So, you guys are all about Rocky Mountain refreshment? Three men who know what they want. I like that. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the frost brewed taste of Coors Light. <sighs> Enjoy the game. <sighs> We're losing, Bill. I know mouth to mouth. I'm okay. I'm good. There's nothing more beautiful than a baby's face lit by the amazing GE Reveal bulb. Reveal filters out yellow, leaving only clean, pure light. GE Reveal. There's nothing more beautiful than clean, pure light. What's your worst fear, Nathan? Who is this? We have your daughter. Now. Get her back. Don't. You want what they want. Say. What is it? A word. Michael Douglas. No! Don't say a word. Tell. Rated R. Now playing only in theaters. The Atlantic Coast Conference. 23 players selected in the 2001 NFL Draft. Three players honored as academic All-Americans. Heisman Trophy and Lombardi Award winners. 13 players honored as All-Americans. Pure power. Pure tradition. Pure thrills. The ACC. Accelerate your dreams. This is Sports Center in Game, the Keystone Light Halftime Report. 
Friday night, ESPN presents the latest installment of Outside the Lines, Broken Trust. Coaches and Sexual Abuse looks at the growing amount of inappropriate behavior between coaches and student athletes. Friday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Back to Atlanta, Mike and the gang will have the second half. The Terrapins surprising the 15th ranked Yellow Jackets 14 zip. They'll get the ball first to start the second half, too. Have you been arrested for DUI and felt you were innocent? Do you need an experienced attorney to represent you in court? Representing people in a DUI or criminal case requires extensive legal knowledge, hard work, and experience. At Phillips & Associates, we can help. We have experienced, aggressive attorneys who are familiar with the recent court challenges, and we can accept some DUI cases with little or no money down. Remember, at Phillips & Associates, we can begin your DUI or criminal case with little or no money down. Call 602-258-8888. Batteries Plus has batteries for everything. Laptops, smoke alarms, fish locators, golf carts, cameras, and generators, scanners and scales, defibrillators, cell phones, pages, and calculators, for toys and games and for portable sound. If we don't have the battery, it can't be found. It's everything batteries with batteries for everything. It's everything batteries with batteries for everything. It's everything batteries with batteries for everything. With locations valley-wide. Here at Batteries Plus. NCAA football influenced your life. NCAA football teaches you how to be a leader in sports, in the classroom, and in business. NCAA football taught me how to reach beyond my potential, how to dream, how to make that reality. One of the greatest classrooms there is. NCAA football, pass it on. Reason is seeing up 14 nothing. Time to get on the bandwagon for the Ramblin' Wreck. Off we go to the second half of college football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Maryland has lost 33 straight games to ranked teams. 1990 against Virginia, their last win over a ranked team. But they lead in Atlanta 14 nothing as we start the third quarter. Jay missed the field goal at the end of the first half and is set to kick off. A deep boot. Unreturnable. Touchback. The Terps will start at the 20. ESPN Game Track, those of you who are just joining us tonight, George Gotze has been pressured for two INTs, now five on the season. Four first half for Gotze. There's a great call. They kept running the option, option, then they pitched it on reverse play to Jafar Williams. 6-2, 201 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, the reason Maryland's winning is because their defense, led by the junior E.J. Henderson, the middle linebacker, number one tackler on the team, and you can see he's off to a great start here in tonight's game. Phenomenal 12 tackles. First down toss to Bruce Perry, who runs well across the 30 and two, the 36-yard line. Perry banged up, slowed, 10 carries, 29 yards first half. Big start to the second. And check the numbers here in the first 30 minutes, and you see Georgia Tech's offense, 3.2 per play and three turnovers. Only, Maryland only five points with 14 points. They've only got really one touchdown on the defense. After gaining 17, three for Perry to the 40. Good point, Lee. E.J. Henderson had the first touchdown on a fumble yeah. return. Let's go check in with Dr. Jerry Punch down on the sideline. Guys at halftime in the Maryland locker room, I saw a very, very uh, hungry football team playing with a lot of confidence. And uh, Ralph Freeman had been like, it looked like a veteran head coach instead of a first-year head coach. Talked about his defense, not tackling one in the second quarter, got to run to the football. Offensively, wants to run the football. He said, guys, we run the football and don't have penalties. Tonight, the nation will see a coming out party for Terrapin football. Seen half of it already. Hill to throw in. By Jeremy Myers. 
I just happened to be looking at Myers. As Hill was dropping back, he was looking right to the receiver. Myers sees the same thing that we saw up here. He makes his read, and once you see that tight end go out, and he's assigned to the tight end, he cut up field and jumped right in front of it to make a big play for Tech. Dotsie and the Yellow Jackets to the air with Jonathan Smith. Six yards to the 35-yard line. Number 82, Jonathan Jerry, Smith. what was going on with George O'Leary and the Jackets? Well, talked about offense trying to move the football. He said we're going to go with a lot of two tight end sets. It's going to be physical up front with both tight ends. Give Godsey some time to throw the football. Might see a little more option here in the second half. Guys? We'll watch for the two tight ends. John Paul Fossey, the other tight end. With Matt Bay. Godsey pumping and looking in zone. Incomplete for Kelly Campbell. I like the play call, the play calling here in the first couple plays. You know they're averaging less than two yards per run on first and ten in the first half, putting them in second and third long, and now you're at a disadvantage. Here, early in this, this uh, first couple plays, they come out, throw a simple hitch, and then the hitch and go, just to try to slow down Gary Blackney and the Maryland defense from continuing to attack that line of scrimmage. Third and a long three. Yeah. That aggressive Maryland defense. They back out, bring four. Dodsey's underneath pass is intercepted on the deflection. Leon Joe. The fourth Georgia Tech turnover. Dodsey has many interceptions in the first 32 and a half minutes as he had all season. Pass intercepted. One of the interesting points about coaching is the first six minutes of the second half usually determines the momentum. And right now, you can tell the Maryland sideline, the Georgia Tech sideline is down. The Maryland sideline has helped. Now, that was a bad break because it really wasn't a bad pass. It was just luck. But let me tell you something. Luck or not, the momentum right now is with Maryland. And if they could get one right now, it's good night, sweetheart. Really? Yes, sir. They get up 21 to win this game. Rich Parson, 22, is in the game. This is Parson blocking Hill, has nobody to pitch it to. He's taken down at the 37-yard line. That's a good triple option, except they don't have any to pitch it to. <laughs> well, so that's a triple option that turns into a one option. That's right. Now, now Eric Crouch can run that to perfection. <laughs> yes, yes, but uh, <laughs> this isn't Eric Crouch. Sean Hill, though, there, he, he good recognition. A lot of times, the quarterback will make the pitch without seeing the pitch back. How about Kansas State yeah. Oklahoma? Yeah. And there, right before he released it, he recognized that the back one there and tucked it up underneath. Boy, the mistake. Second and nine pass. Comes back to the fullback length. He dropped it. Has one pass on the year. Sophomore from Washington, D.C. Could not hang on. You know, you talk about Parsons, uh, rather Hill. He's from Parsons, Kansas. Same hometown as uh, somebody who's familiar in the ACC lore, Bill Guthridge, who plays Dean Smith at North Carolina as a basketball coach. He went to junior college because he was a pure option quarterback in high school. We need to learn how to throw the ball more. Then came to Maryland, started a few games last year, full-time starter this year. They say his greatest attribute is his calm demeanor and his decision-making. Third and eight. Incomplete. He was kind of nudged and hit as he threw, and he wanted a face mask call, but it didn't come. The pressure came from Gathers. But you know, it's interesting. We haven't had Gathers or Rodgers with a sack yet. So those two offensive tackles, Brooks and Crawford, are doing a nice job on those two ends. That and, and you got to credit Charlie Taft for getting the three-step and five-step drops and getting rid of the football yeah. very, very fast. It's tough for Rodgers and Gathers to get in there. That was a big stop by Georgia Tech's defense. Absolutely. Brooks, Bernard, punt pressure coming. Maryland's been very sound in punt protecting tonight. And a hard-to-return punt especially when it goes out of bounds. Long field, 41-yard kick. Fans are ready to make some noise. The offense hasn't helped them in that call. Okay, good news. That broadband thing we all want? Got it figured out. Honey, you call the phone company. Tracy, you're digging the trench, shovels in the garage. I'm going up on the roof to assess satellite possibilities. Timmy, check out these schematics. Appreciate it. Let's go! Run in! We know how you feel, and that's why Circuit City offers one-stop high-speed internet access. You can find what's available where, compare options, and arrange installation. Circuit City, we're with you. Yeah, we can get broadband at Circuit City. Will we win?
win? Hopefully. Will we lose? Maybe. Will we learn? Definitely. Sears Auto Center, we install your tires in less than an hour, or you get a $20 Sears gift card. Sears, where else? Corky Romano was a veterinarian with a song in his heart. But this Friday, you'll have to infiltrate the FBI. Sorry. Corky Romano, reading PG-13. I'm not saying get on. We are in Midtown Atlanta, Georgia, a very vibrant city, has hosted everything. Super Bowl, Olympics, Final Four will be at the Georgia Dome at the end of uh, the basketball season, which starts around the country this weekend with practice. A lot of midnight madness midnight tomorrow madness. and Saturday. And good luck to all the college basketball players and coaches as they get set for their first steps on the road to Atlanta. Here, 14-0 Maryland. First down pass is complete to Kelly Campbell, who lost the football. And do you believe a fifth turnover? It's in the hands of Randall Jones, who has blockers, and is taken down by Godsey. And then the rest of the offense at the 31. Georgia Tech turned it over seven times in the first five games. Then turned it over five times in the first 33 minutes tonight. Great call. Everything oh, yeah. is executed perfectly. Ball's thrown right there. Campbell's trying to make a play, and Maryland's stripping the football. Tony Akonlawan. Yep. Ball goes down, and they're, I mean, they're all over these Georgia Tech receivers and ball carriers. Remember what Gary Blackman told us during the week. Everybody works on strip drills, getting the ball out. We've really worked hard at it, and gets the ball in. Perry with the run. Gains a yard. The yards have been tough to come by in the ground game tonight, both ways. Five turnovers. That's 20 now in the season, which is, now they've yep. given, given up a few yards, but they don't allow teams to score, only 14 a game coming in, and they create turnovers. Officially no gain, second and ten. Swing to Perry with blockers. The yard shy of the first down. Marker down as well. Right at the point where Perry went out of bounds. And it will come back from the spot. Maryland has great field position. Five turnovers tonight. Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator. 20 takeaways now with five tonight. Does lead the NCAA. Now teams haven't played this weekend, obviously coming up, but that's still phenomenal. And that's his aggressive style. That's what he believes in. We mentioned former Bowling Green head coach for a decade there. Charlie Taft, the offensive coordinator, was a head coach at the Citadel and also a head coach in Montreal of the CFL. You put Ralph, Charlie, and Blackley together, and they're the fifth oldest staff in America. In terms I of experience for head coach experience. and coordinator. That's right. Pitt. Obviously, I think Joe Paterno is number one. And he has to be. Second and 12 after the flag. Hill will run and get them into a third and short situation. You know what this hill reminds me of? A guy I saw in Oklahoma last week named Jason White. He's just kind of a big, tall guy, 6'3", 220. But you know what? That guy, Kirk, is quick. Did you see the way he covered that ground when he decided to run? Well, he kind of filled in a hurry. Oh, He's I'm much quicker you. than you realize. 
much quicker. The thing that I, I like about him is he makes good decisions. He's, he's not going to, in most cases, put his team in a bad situation there instead of throwing it away and being second and real long. Now it's just third and two. You can run or pass here. Option, first down and more. This to the 16-yard line. I like what you said, Kirk. Decisive. You, know, you don't have to be the fastest player if you make the correct decision early enough. One thing about him also, he is, he is absolutely outplaying the great George Gotze today because he's doing everything right. He comes down the line of scrimmage, he plants that foot right now, and at 6'3", 221, he's a load to tackle. You know what, that is a design play. You saw the momentum of the defenders yeah. going one way. The linemen just kept pushing him that way, and he had the presence of mind to cut back underneath that to pick up the first one. From the 16, Perry. Yard to the 15, Jerry Parks. Hey guys, last night at the Maryland Hotel, we talked to Ralph Friedgen and his players. Sean Hill told us a big difference in this team this year is the intensity with which they practice. So we practice with so much intensity, and uh, Coach Friedgen charts everything. He keeps stats on completion, take completions, how many yards on the option, how many yards running. So if we get to the game, the pressure is off. We have so much pressure in practice, we get to relax and we can execute in the football game, and we are much better football team. Ralph thought they were having a bad week this week, but then looked at the numbers, and Hill was 83% in practice. That pass is incomplete intended for Jafar Williams. Ralph said, I realized how uptight I was. I was on the kids this week, and I turned around and looked at the numbers, and Hill was 83%. Those are the numbers they had when Joe Hamilton was at Georgia Tech. I want you to look at his picture, and I didn't realize this. Well, Ralph Friedgen does not call the offensive plays. Charlie Taffy does. I thought this is the Ralph Friedgen was calling the plays and making all the major decisions, but he's not. That guy right there, Charlie Taffy's calling. I'm, I'm sure Ralph is giving him some help, but I thought he was calling every play. He's not. Jumped in yet this year. Third and nine. Incomplete. Trying to get his tight end, Matt Murphy, who's only caught a couple of balls all year. It'll bring up fourth down and a 32-yard field goal attempt for Novak. Remember, they had a fake field goal that was stopped as Lynch ran a couple of yards short. Will be the first attempt of the night for Novak. 32. Missed it right. Four of 11 field goals on the year. It is the one part of this team that is not held up for Ralph Friedman. Georgia Tech. Got a break there. <laughs> Me. You can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. utility vehicles and minivans and by Tostito Scoops the dip lovers chip 
Centennial Park in Atlanta. Great way to remember the hood and the things that are remembered for other reasons from the 96 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Here it's 14-0 Maryland. And there is so far the defensive player of the night, E.J. Henderson, nine un six unassisted tackles, six assisted tackles, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, one sack, a two-yard loss, and I'm telling you, the guy's all over the place. Johnson fakes the option, tries to go up top, and there's the receiver open to midfield with Kerry Watkins. 30 yards. First time that Kerry Watson's had a chance. Looks like they're going to roll coverage into that Campbell. And what do you think? In the slot, Kerry, Kerry Watson in the slot, Watkins. That's right. They put him in a slot and they have option action. Look at the fake down the line. Kind of dips down to hide himself. And now you've got a mismatch there. If he leads him a little bit, he's probably still running for a touchdown. Tony Jackson, strong safety. Not going to yeah, catch no up. Way. From midfield. Back to the air on first down. And complete to Kelly Campbell. Pick up of about four. Even though we expect George Godsey to just be very, very accurate every time he goes out and plays and be very effective, we have to remember that as, as intelligent as he is, they call him a computer out there on the field. He's still relatively young as far as his starting experience, so it's okay for him to kind of go up and down with his accuracy. He just needs to find his rhythm to give Tech's offense a chance. Karome Cox, who didn't start because of injury, is in after Denard Wilson just got hurt. Gotsu with time, throws incomplete. Coverage was good all around there. Pass intended for number six, Kelly Campbell. I think Maryland's defense is doing more than shutting Georgia Tech down. They're, they're keeping Godsey out of rhythm. Watch his drop here. He's trying to look over his left shoulder. He nearly falls down, dropping back. And again, as soon as he gets rid of the football, he's hit by 55 Mike Whalen. Needing to get just past the 40. Glover was in the same high school as Godsey, Jesuit High School in Tampa. They were there together for one year. They're going to bring another blitz here, this time from the outside. And watch George Godsey feel this coming right into his face. As soon as he gets rid of the football, he gets hit again. And this is the athletic ability of Glover. They feel that he potentially could be the greatest receiver that they have here on this roster long term. First down play action, Gotsey looking deep, well, Smith, incomplete. But Tony Oconrawan has he been is all over. blanketing receivers, and you have to go back to last year, Oconrawan was the most maligned Maryland Terrapin of them all. As a matter of fact, when Ralph Friedman was going around talking to boosters and fans, getting them interested in this year's Maryland team, they'd all ask, oh, what about Oconrawan? You can't play him. And he was getting criticized by fans in the offseason. To see the way the guy has come back, yeah. an interception here tonight, leads the nation in INTs, is a great story for the senior. He's from DeMatha High School, which is one of the great high schools in, around that Maryland area. Great basketball, plus football. Morgan Wooten, legendary coach. Henderson, the pressure, the pass underneath to Watkins. That's a completion at the 35, a pickup of four yards. yards. And Georgia Tech is becoming exclusively a passing team. I think that sounds good, but in my opinion, they better do something to keep that pressure off of Gotsi. Because our guy, E.J. Henderson, cracked him again. And he's not going to get up after one of these hits because if you get hit a lot, they got to do something like a run or a yeah. swing. Keep a fresh draw. Well, they something. only have 24 runs for 26 yards tonight. Yeah, but at least they can keep their pass rush down. Right? I understand. I understand. 35. Four wide. Gotsi, pressure, put it up. Incomplete for Glover. And again, you can't blame Gotsi for huh. not getting it out to the right spot because he was going down. Might go for it here on fourth down, guys. Well, Gotsi's going to get hit again here, Kurt, because of the pressure. Now, watch if you lose. Twist in the line. Boom. Remember, D 
defensive coaches will tell you, not only do they want to sack the quarterback, but every time they hit him, they think that's a win, don't they? You sure do. You get the quarterback starting to feel the pressure exactly. instead of focusing downfield. And they've hit him. They've thrown 11 straight passes. He's probably been hit 11 straight times. Going for it on fourth down. Well, he jumped. Gotsy sneaks it and runs it forward for the first down. <laughs> the markers did come down. The quick snap to induce the offside, and they got it on the run. That's what they call a safe play and a free play, because as soon as he snapped the ball, they jumped offside. It's a free play. He automatically ran the quarterback sneak. That's a good, well-coached football team that does that occasionally. It's also a good job by the center, David Schmidtko. Centers, centers are taught that as soon as you see a defensive player jump offside, right. snap the ball back, and the quarterback's got to be ready to secure the football. Schmidt, Gall, and Godsey, very close friends. Obviously, quarterback centers spend a lot of time together or play uh, college football video games. They wanted to ask you guys about video oh, games yeah. yesterday, oh, yeah. comments you make on game day. They're really close. Godsey firing to the 12, Kelly Campbell. At 16 yards. Outside of the quarterback sneak, everything has been through the air, and Georgia Tech is having success. This time, they're going to go to the main target. Kelly Campbell gets an inside burst, comes back to the outside, and again, recognize that the football's in the air before Kelly Campbell makes his cut. And he was reading Tony O's body, and he leaned one way, he cut the other way. That's why that worked. Here is Godsey. To Glover. Lost the ball, and it's recovered by Tech for a touchdown. <laughs> Joe Burns followed the play and recovered the Glover fumble. It should be Burns credited with the touchdown. Kelly Campbell was shaken up in the scramble for the ball. 14-6, and Luke Manje, who has an ACC record, 113 consecutive extra points. Makes it 114, and we have a seven-point game. Interesting about Manje, you know, he did miss an extra point at Syracuse. Yes, he did. It was but a there penalty. was a penalty, he got to do it over again. They caught a break here, threw the football all the way down the field. George Gotze makes the throw. Glover reaches, comes up short, and Burns is there to make a big touchdown. And Georgia Tech getting right back in this game. You know, at Del Taco, we got something Taco Bell doesn't have. It's a spicy chicken burrito. Freshly grilled chicken, slow-cooked beans, and a spicy green sauce. Del Taco has it, they don't, and we're letting everyone know about it. Spicy chicken burrito! <laughs> People love the pepper, man. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, no, no! Oh, no, no! It's just so cute and cuddly. <laughs> Kids especially love it. You just want to hug him, that's the thing. You just want to hug him and hold on to him. It's time for you. It's time to spread your wings and do the things you've always wanted to do. It's all out there. You have come of age. So many places to be, faces to see. Break out of that cage. Are disturbing. I felt somebody down at the bottom of my bed. He forced himself on me. Do you feel like parents trusted you? Sure. How many different children do you think you were involved with? A couple hundred. Outside the Lines, Broken Trust, Coaches, and Sexual Abuse, Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. College Football Saturday. Number two Florida's Heisman Hungry Rex Grossman and the Gators take on the Auburn D in an SEC shootout. College Football Saturday. Florida, Auburn, 745 Saturday on ESPN. Back with you from Atlanta on College Football Thursday night presented by Circuit City, Georgia Tech. It was so difficult for them to get on the board and they almost turned it over at the one. Recover the fumble in the end zone. 
seven-point game. Manje kicks returnable for Rich Carson. Oh, he's got a seal on the outside. Held up and brought down at the 20-yard line. Return of 18 yards. What a very good special teams play by Marvius Hester. Marker is down on the play as well. They look at Kelly Campbell, who was hurt in the scramble for the fumble, as you see the touchdown drive. Extra trigger activities. Jamal Chance from Maryland with about eight Georgia Tech players on the sideline of Georgia Tech. We'll see if it's going to go both ways. At the ways. end of the play, there was a personal foul by the white team. 15 yards, first down. Jamal Chance got right in the middle there, and looks like Georgia Tech was, uh, what are they, what's the saying? Giving him the business? Giving him the business. <laughs> ben Dreis, old word. Watch Burns here on this touchdown. Well, great hustle by Burns to recognize a loose ball downfield, but Glover makes a play here. He's able to cut up fields, trying to stretch, trying to make something happen. And as he does, the ball comes loose, thankfully, for Georgia Tech. Joe Burns, who wasn't even in the play, hustling down and finds the loose ball in the end zone. The touchdown to the left of the offense. Burns was out to the right on the pass play. Hill, Hennessy through. Incomplete. Lucky that that isn't going back the other way for a touchdown. And a marker comes in after the play. Ball's tipped. That's, that will be waved off. Ball is tipped. You can't have pass interference. The officials immediately discuss it, and that is the case. The pass was tipped, therefore, there is no penalty. Take it down. They're starting to be a little bit more active here. Fox putting the pressure, finally putting a little bit of pressure on Sean Hill instead of just on George Gonsett. You notice it wasn't one of those defensive ends. They had to bring a linebacker yeah. from the outside. Yep. Now, one thing I want to say about Maryland, they're 5-0, and oh, but this is the time where you find out if they can answer a challenge right now. Second and 10, screen set up. Perry. The first down across the 45-yard line. He caught eight balls against Virginia, has now 16 catches on the season, and does more than just run and battle injury. The thing that I think the entire nation is seeing that we're learning more and more about Bruce Perry. He, of course, he leads the nation in rushing yards per game, but tonight you're recognizing that he has tremendous toughness. Doc mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast that he was battling through some injuries, and I'm sure he'll continue to update us on that, but this entire football game, Perry has been reaching and feeling the pain that he's trying to block out of his mind. Nick Rogers out of the game for the moment. First and 10 for Maryland. Hill throws to the tight end, complete to Jeff Dugan at midfield. A pickup of four. Let's check in with Jerry. Adding to what uh, Herbie was saying about Bruce Perry, a year ago, Ralph Freaking said Perry st spent his time nicked up a little bit of things in the training room and never was a major factor. This year, he has been nicked up, but he has been playing game after game, carrying the football. At halftime, the sophomore from uh, Philadelphia had his thigh worked on, his right thigh, where he's got a pretty significant bruise, big ice pack, dealing with a sore hamstring, rib sore, a swollen knee, and now a bruise in the thigh. But he's getting the job done. Guys, see what a second effort runner he is. And he tries the middle and doesn't get much. Coming off the edge, Kiaran Fox, an outstanding game for the sophomore from Atlanta who stepped up. Their leading tackler, but has been a presence. Played as a true freshman last year. Went to the same high school as Keith Adams, the Clemson green linebacker. So imagine those guys in the linebacker tradition of that high school. Defensive coordinator Ted Rowe obviously found out one thing. He's bringing those guys linebackers from the outside because he can't get them up the middle. Maryland's offensive line is doing too good of a job in the inside. Third and six, Tech backs out of man coverage. And a snap. Miscommunication will make it third and long. snap false start offense five yards and still third down Ralph Friedman team third and long coming up but they don't have to worry about Nick Rogers at least for the rest of this series you see him over on the sideline being worked on by the medical staff at Georgia Tech 
Maryland's a team that likes to drop three and five steps and get rid of the football. They very rarely will drop back in a pocket and wait. And we are here on third and 11 for Williams. Triple cover incomplete. The zone reacted as that ball was up there for a while. And Tech's defense continues to build the enthusiasm for the home team. And that was the same area that Maryland was beaten cover two in the first half. And our guy, Jeremy Myers, has made the adjustment from Coach Ted Roof that they're now double covering, doing a lot better in that seam area. Rogers off to the locker room to look at. Brooks Bernard try to give Georgia Tech a long field. Kelly Rhino back to receive. 49-yard kick. Rhino dropped it. Now picked it up. And returns it to the 14 and took a huge hit from Tony Jackson in the back as Chance was holding him up. Well, Saturday night's primetime game, Rex Gross with 300 plus passing yards in all five games. Takes the Gators, number two in the coaches poll, number one in the media poll, to Auburn to take on the 3-0 in the league. Tiger. Oh. Ed Jordan Hare. How about the numbers for Rex thus far this year, Lee? Woo. You know, he's had two 300-yard passing games in the first half. Yep, that's right. Coverage Eight. begins with the college game day scoreboard at 7 Eastern. First down pass, Godsey is incomplete. Intended for Kelly Campbell. While you mentioned Florida, our guys at halftime had that BCS projected on Brad Edwards thing. They had Oklahoma number one, Florida two, Miami 13th. Some people Just wondered. Projecting. Some people wondered Miami, why. What? 13th. That's what they had at halftime. I saw it. 13th. Yes, sir. Projected BCS. Projected BCS. The actual BCS will not come out for another week plus. Yeah. It was going to come out Monday, but it's been pushed back one more week. I'll explain why in a moment. Godsey hit from behind and brought down Durand Roundtree. Third sack of the season for round three. Third sack of the night for the Terrapin defense. Grand Roundtree is the strongest lineman they've had in Maryland since that Randy White kind guy. 6'3", 260 for Baltimore, Maryland. He comes from the outside and beats the freshman tackle, Nate Dorsey. Now, Dorsey's going to be a great football player, but he's only a freshman. That's I'll tell you what, that's, that's, asking, round tree. that's asking a lot for a true freshman oh, to, yeah. to hold up against Roundtree. Third and 17. They rush only three. Watkins dropped it. It'll be punt time for 10. Just to finish up the point about the BCS, yes. John Swafford, the commissioner of the ACC, who's handling the administration of the BCS this year, uh, spoke to him before the game, and the point was made, with the week of lost games, plus the BCS final poll, which decides who plays the one against two game, pushed back one week from where it was supposed to be announced, there isn't enough of a sample. The sample's too thin to do it now. That's why they're pushing it back a week. And the first BCS poll will come out in nine days. I don't care if it comes out after week one. How can Miami be 13? Well, we're going to have to call Brad Edwards, our ace guy who knows more about that than that, almost anybody does, in the world. Does Troy, does Troy State drop you to 13? Dan Dyke with the punt. Fair punt. Great field position in the 42 for Gary. You know, Maryland never even dreamed of talking words BCS or any sort of a title. And Maryland has won an average of four games a year the last 15. They've already won five. They're leading here on the way to a possible sixth win. I know Fresno's had a great turnaround. Washington State's been yeah. terrific. Well, yeah. This These is guys. right up there, guys, don't uh, you think? If Maryland wins tonight, I think the whole nation starts to believe in this football team. They've got to go to Florida State, which would be a tough assignment. Yep. But I tell you what, I like Maryland's attitude because they're still aggressive. They got the ball again in good field position. They're playing hard. The greatest compliment you can play for a coach, say for a coach, is his team plays hard. And they're playing hard for Ralph Friedman. From the 41, it is Perry. Georgia Tech is punishing the man who came in leading the nation in rushing yards per game. Myers made the tackle, and Jerry has an update on Georgia Tech's defensive end, Nick Rogers. And Michael uh, Cramps, we're seeing more and more Cramps here on the sidelines. A redshirt senior record-setting defensive end, Nick Rogers, has gone to the Georgia Tech locker room for fluids. I would expect that would be IV fluids, trying to get him hydrated, get the Cramps to go away. It's back up in the game, a freshman, Tony Harbro. Number 44 from Florida. Hills pass to Jafar Williams. 
to the 37. You saw Chris Young try to strip it away. If Jerry's still there, Doc, I have a question. Does a short, it's a cool night here. Does a short week at all have an impact on players cramping up in the third quarter after halftime? You know, it's interesting, Mike. Uh, we, we're seeing cramps on both sides, and uh, I think it may have a little bit of an impact with what, what we're seeing here. It isn't, it isn't humid. Uh, it isn't very warm here, but I think that it's been cool early in the week, and now these players have, are, are really laying the line. It is a very intense football game. They hear a lot of hitting from the get-go. And I think emotion has a lot to do there. Thank you, guys. Third and five. play perhaps delay of game as we watch the clock go down third and five will become third and ten delay of game by the offense five yards still third down well again if you were just joining us Ralph Friedgen has spent plenty of time in this stadium, but on the other sideline as the offensive coordinator, first with Bobby Ross and then with George O'Leary for the last four years. They're close friends. About an hour and a half from here, they have on the same lake in uh, Lake Oconee vacation homes. They vacation together during the summer. But head to head here tonight. Hills pass. It is! Hester's second on the season. Guys, again, Maryland has a, a an offense that relies on the timing patterns because they don't like the protection of the deep drops. Here, five-step drop, one hitch, throw the football. Hester baited Gary the entire time, stepping back, stepping back, hoping that Sean Hill would throw the football and stepped up and made the play. First down pass, incomplete. Intended for Burns. The official got in the way that time. The umpire. The umpire got right in the way of Burns trying to catch that football. So Hill and Maryland have now turned it over a couple of times. And there you see the seniors numbers. Sean Hill and George Godsey are equaling their season INT totals tonight. Some of the familiarity both teams have with each other. This pass is complete to Smith at the 41. Pick up a 5, 35 coming up. And Godsey and Hill each had three INTs for the season coming in. George has thrown three, although one wasn't his fault. Sean Hill has thrown two, and as we mentioned, they're running the same offense. They all know uh, what each other does here. Hills back up to Trez Harris and just staying loose. The Atlanta native. Flags come down for the snap. I think the left tackle that time, Nate Dorsey, jumped early. The reason he did is because that last sack that he gave up to Roundtree. Prior to the snap, there was a false start by the offense. That's five yards, and it's still third down. Well, there's no hiding Dorsey when he makes a move. Oh. He has size 17 cleats. Third down and 10. You can't hide a size 17 shoe. 6'6", 315 for New Orleans. And remember when Bill O'Brien says that Georgia Tech rarely gets that kind of a great football player here. And we got him. True freshman playing the left tackle spot. So now it's third and ten. Godsey. Pass is caught. Oh. Kerry Watkins saw Ty Stewart not turn to the ball. And Tech has it at the Maryland 32. Now Kerry Watkins, every six or seven times he touches the football, he gets a touchdown. This is a sensational pass, but more important, look at that concentration Kirk he went up caught it at his highest point with his hands it had a great looking catch by Watkins final minute third quarter incomplete for Campbell Castle. 
As soon as we are done, Sports Center on ESPN. Rich Eisen and Chris Berman will join us. Boomer, back in the house, more Sports Center. After doing a couple of games of the baseball playoffs on ESPN Radio, Chris will join Rich for all the scores and the highlights from the two AL playoff games. Good look ahead to the weekend in college football as well, plus the hockey. And Michael Jordan's first game, preseason game in Detroit tonight. This is second and ten. Joe Burns, haven't seen much of him in this quarter, and he runs for seven yards. That's just the second running play out of the 22 offensive plays for Georgia Tech this quarter. Here Georgia Tech just challenged them up front. This is a simple play, two tight ends, isolation up front, need a big block from the fullback here. His redshirt freshman Jonathan Jackson. I don't know if he had a great block, but at least he got in the way of E.J. Henderson <laughs> to open up the hole for Joe Burns. And of three. Oh, no, he's, go ahead, he's that redshirt freshman, yes. 6'2", 225 from Jacksonville Bowles that could be a great prospect here. O'Leary's team, the only touchdown, and off we go to the fourth quarter. Two friends going head-to-head, -head, trying to get their offenses to perform better in the final 15. Sidelines, tonight at midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific, on ESPN. Win? Hopefully. Will we lose? Maybe. Will we learn? Definitely. was possibly the finest rock and roll show I have ever seen. I smell world tour! Wow. You mean the whole world? Yet. You're not Gene. You're not Paul. You're... You guys aren't Kiss. No. But we did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> I am very proud of my lawn. We enjoy it as much as he does. Our neighbors usually ask me what I use, and I tell them. You know, I use Scott's winterizer. He really cares. When you apply it in the fall, the food actually enters the root system. It stores it over the winter. And then in the spring, it perks that grass right up. It explodes, basically. Obviously, it's a critical step. He's tried other products, too. They just didn't work out. Scott's winterizer gives me the last green lawn in the fall and the first green lawn in the spring. Nice wrench work, Chief. If more men would heed the call of the Y chromosome, maybe more of us would have three such faucets at our fingertips. Hot. Cold. And... Miller High Life. fourth quarter of college football Thursday night presented by Circuit City with Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet and Dr. Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico. Two top 20 teams going head to head. Maryland trying to beat a top 20 team for the first time, top 25 team, the first time in 34 tries. George Godsey's had excellent numbers in the fourth quarter in his career and very good this season including the Clemson game that went into overtime. We start with third and about three. And Ralph Friedgen sees his old offense go four wide. Johnson's has got a pocket. Got a first down with Smith. Smith, hey, touchdown! Luke 
Monte on for the tying extra point. 115 in a row. New game at 14. On this one, number 82, Jonathan Smith will start to the outside and cut back, and he catches the ball. One thing about this guy, remember, he's a great all-around athlete. He averages 38 points a game for the high school star. Now, Kirk, take it from there. Watch this play. This is an outstanding play. Great call. It's man coverage. It's called a rub route. It's almost like a pick. The big tight end, Will Farrell, is going to slow down right here. Pick his man, or we'll call it politically correct, a rub route, and look at the speed once Jonathan Smith makes the catch. That's why they think this guy could be one of the best receivers that they've ever had at Georgia Tech. And remember, he was also a high school quarterback. Yep. And they said if they ever need a quarterback to be a quarterback and just run the option and everything, it's going to be Jonathan Smith, right? They said in high school he was just one of those athletes that dominated the game. Quarterback, basketball, he, he could probably play basketball at Georgia Tech. He averaged 38 Eight. points a game in high school basketball to give you an idea how athletic Jonathan Smith really is. With the injury to Nate Curry this year, Smith has earned the play time and stepped up. That is second touchdown, a 25-yarder. Maryland had a 14-0 lead. It's now 14-14 with a whole quarter to go. And remember, I mentioned good football team's answer. So far, Maryland has not answered the Georgia Tech onslaught. They've got to stop it right here and answer with something. Monjay kicks, which Carson a return. Very congested on that right side and taken to the 20. Football's a game of momentum and right now it's heading towards Georgia Tech. Lee so mentioned, can they answer? It's one thing to answer. It's another thing when a team scores 14 unanswered points and the entire crowd in the stadium and the team, it's a totally different atmosphere in this stadium right now. But good football teams do answer. There's Ben 10 for Sean Hill and the Maryland offense sluggish in the third quarter. Keeping, nobody to pitch to, lost five. That's Ricardo Winbush again. <laughs> Tech's crowding the line of scrimmage and trying to make Sean Hill beat them. Look how tight they are. Reed dive first. Now they're coming to the quarterback. I think it's a mix-up in the yeah, backfield with Maryland. Second time Sean Hill hasn't had a pitch back when he's run the option. They lost three. No tight end here. Three receivers, two backs, five in the pattern. They're all covered. Hill's got nobody running over there with him. He runs out of bounds. And a flag is thrown. Rogers, who was out, went into the locker room to get an IV, get some fluids in him. There's no broad white sideline stripe over there that you have in the bench area. Tougher to pick out the sideline. First down, Maryland. Well, once Hill broke out of the pocket and looked off to the right, he didn't have a receiver even anywhere on that side of the field. It was pretty obvious he was going to run. I want to see. Boy, that's really a tough call. Nick Rogers is coming at full momentum. By the time he got his hands around yeah. the quarterback, he was still in bounds. Not only that, he rode him down. He didn't throw him down. That was a very poor call by that official. First and 10, Maryland. We're at the 36. Carry inside couple of yards trying to run behind Lamar Bryant his sophomore right guard think about this guys the five turnovers for Georgia Tech you have twice they've they've uh, been penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct 15 15 yard penalties think about all the mistakes they've made and yet 14 14 13 and a half minutes to go in the game and their defense has only given up seven points because the first touchdown came on a fumble recovery Play pass. Hill looking for Julian Gary at the 45 of Georgia Tech. First well, down. I got to show you guys an unbelievable route. 
Watch this Julian Gary. He'll go down and break it to the inside with like a fake to the post and then run a post corner. Now keep your eye right there on Gary, number 21. Watch, look at that. Turn and roll out. Oh, and that's a perfect pass and a great route by Julian Gary. Nice play. Gary was hurt the week before the opening game, but has come back and played well. Looking for the home run with Williams, but he was well covered. That pass was never in danger of being completed. Number 19, Jafar Williams, Jeremy Myers defending. And respect the fact that Maryland is not pulling their horns in and being conservative here with the crowd getting into the game. To get a first down, they come right back and go for the juggler off the option pass, looking for the deep one. Out of the gun, second and ten. Quarterback draw with Hill. Now out to the 40. Third and about five coming up. Jerry? Casually interesting. Ted Ruth a moment ago told his defensive secondary, if we get third and five or more, third and long, we're going to gamble. We're going to bring the pressure because uh, you guys are going to be on an island. Man coverage back there. We're going to bring the pressure. We have got to get the shot here. Guys, third and five. Let's see what he does. All right. We have three receivers. Let's watch Fox here. Here they come. Whistles blow. And it will be third and longer. That's a dead ball foul. Ball start by the offense. Five yards. And it's still third down. Do you still bring the heat now, guys? I wouldn't. I'll tell you why I wouldn't. Because there was a guy wide open, isolated on the linebacker, the tight end. If he'd had time, it would have been all over. And also, Maryland is a team that they rely on throwing the ball short to intermediate. Exactly. I would I would put my corners in a position to make them get them up tight and make them throw the football behind them. And I'd make sure they cover that post corner route with those safeties. Stepped up, couldn't get away from Rogers. Time for Tech's first sack of the season, of the night, excuse me. That great gathers the other defensive end, slow and limping. Brooks Bernard is on to punt. About 30% of his punts, he's pinned the opponents inside the 20 this year. bounce touchback drive will start from the 20 Nick Rogers left earlier needed to get some fluids in him has uh, done a good job getting back in the game former tailback got into the backfield to get the quarterback that time look I know Circuit City's doing this expo thing but we're busy get what you need we're out of here agreed yes We know how you feel. It's Expo 2001. 30 days of non-stop demonstrations of what's hot and what's next in electronics. September 30th through October 31st. Circuit City, we're with you. You take as much care with a customer's car as you do with your wife's. You call each customer to make sure they're satisfied with the work. And your waiting room has coffee people actually like. So it comes as no surprise that the auto parts you recommend and install are AC Delco. When the right way is the only way. AC Delco Automotive Parts. For a chance to win a trip to France in our Drive to Victory sweepstakes, enter at participating service centers or visit acdelco.com. You're at a stoplight. You're making a turn. You're pulling into traffic. There are a lot of reasons every 2002 Saturn L Series comes standard with head curtain airbags. Those are just a few. 
The Saturn L Series. Get 0% APR financing on all Saturn models. For restrictions, see your retailer. At a time when London lived in fear. It's not safe to go out. It took a detective who's ahead of his time. This was all in your vision. To solve the most mysterious crime of all time. Detective is now finished. Where is he? I want you. Johnny Depp. Heather Graham. In a Hughes Brothers film. From Hell. Rated R. October 19th. Only in theaters. Maryland has never won in Atlanta. 0-6, five of those losses by 18 or more. Very rarely are in this situation. Close to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. All tied at 14. Gatsy who's getting hot. Incomplete. Intended for Sydney Ford. Back up tail back out of the backfield. We talked about the importance of Georgia Tech opening things up. Their last couple touchdown drives, look at this. They've been able to run the football just a couple times, throwing it 14. It's pretty apparent that they've seen that the aggressive style of Gary Blackney, one way to try to attack it to have any kind of success is throw the football. Second and 10. A little jump pass to Burns. Big stick by E.J. Henderson after a gain of nine. Third and one ahead. One thing about E.J. Henderson, he's consistent. He has led the Terps and tackles in four of their five ball games. So he is obviously the main player on that football team. And he does look like one of those Oklahoma linebackers, Florida State linebackers, the ones that we've been seeing in person. Good. He's a good-looking football player. No stranger to Tech, 18 tackles against the Yellow Jackets last year. Third and one, they run Burns. Should be right at the mark for a first down. Forward progress to the 30. When you start a drive at the 20, all you got to do is touch that white stripe, or in this case, yellow stripe, and it's a first down. No it's to measure. Interesting, Mike and Kirk. That's exactly the same play that they fumbled yes. that Henderson picked up and scored. So obviously, that was their short yardage play that they decided during practice. Short, short, short yardage play. I, yeah. I don't know if I recommend going back to that one again. Well, but that's Fumble. what they did. Yeah. yeah, I know. They had six inches yeah. there. Burns has only run it a couple of times this half. Just a second count. Smith in motion. A little more on the ground. Burns got out of the first tackle. And got another first down. To the 46-yard line. 16 yards for the junior. I think Joe Burns is one of the more underrated backs in college football. He has so much versatility. Mike, you mentioned he can be a tailback, he can be a fullback. The motion him out. Look how hard he runs with his football. He broke about five tackles on that one carry to pick up the first down there. Keeps his legs running. He's a tough, tough running back. We're in the process of getting set up for play action here. God see to Matt Bay, the tight end. Eight yards, and this looks like the Georgia Tech yeah. offense. So it's a hit, hitting behind the play, knocked out a couple of coaches on the sideline there. It's a good call, Mike. And let me tell you another reason why Burns is running so fast and hard is because the point that Kurt broke up, made up. He only ran the ball twice, so he's rested. It isn't like these backs are going to keep running, keep running, keep running, get tired. This young man is ready to go and run the football. Now they could use more balance in their attack right now. So yeah, you guys are right. More balance. And, and all of a sudden, Mike, you made a good point as well. You feel the rhythm now of the Georgia Tech offense that we've seen for years. Second in the yard. Sydney Ford, the junior, into the boundary. Big hit by Karome Cox in the corner, but that's a first down. First and 10 for the driving jacket. Saturday night, 6.30 ESPN2. Virginia Tech sliding up in the rankings. Takes on Boston College and William Green. He's also been over 100 yards in each of his games this year. For the Tech defense so far, number one overall, number one against the run. They shut out West Virginia. You'll see Virginia Tech BC, 6.30 ESPN2, Saturday night. 
First and ten. Gonsi pumping. And now looking long. It's incomplete. And Gonsi's footwork again. A little awkward. Can't seem to get his feet underneath. And it's tough to be accurate with the throw. A lot of that has to do with the pressure from Maryland. Seems like he's back there. As soon as he pump fakes, he's, he's trying to just buy time because of the pressure from Maryland. You saw that brace on Georgia's leg towards ACL in the Georgia Dome in the uh, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl game against Clemson. We asked him about it, and he said, I keep pulling that brace up all the time, always slipping down on me, and I asked him about cutting, and he said, no, I'm comfortable cutting. But it took me a while to make sure I was comfortable. Sidney Ford with the carry for a couple of yards. Plus, you lose Here. style points, too, with, with the big brace, brace. for the quarterback. Yeah. Jerry? Yeah, you mentioned that they operated on uh, George Gotze's left knee, left ACL repair in the final four minutes of the Peach Bowl last year, and, and Gotze doesn't like wearing the brace. In fact, the, the knee is actually stronger than the other knee. He wears it for protection, and I asked one of the docs, I said, why, why the brace? He said, well, it's not like we're taking his speed away. We really didn't have any to start with, so we're just going to protect the knee, so uh, that was cold. Very cold. Uh, I said Clemson, I beg your pardon, LSU is the team they played in the Peach Bowl. Third and seven. They're going to mark him for the first down at the 31-yard line, too. Will Glover, again, they went to the same high school in Tampa, Florida, Jesuit High School. I want to tell you about a well-coached receiver. That receiver went two yards behind the first down and then came back to the ball. I've seen it a hundred times that these receivers go short. This is a perfect example. Now watch Glover. He'll drive down. He knows where the first down is. He goes two yards, comes back. Look, when he comes back, he separates from the defensive back. That's why that play works. It's a heck of a spot, too. Oh. <laughs> first and 10 for the 31. Four first downs on this drive. Burns got out of the tackle and keeps going to the 27-yard line. Leon Joe said hello, and Burns said goodbye. Again, Jonathan Jackson leading the way up front. You can see the Georgia Tech players starting to taste it, getting closer and closer. Remember we talked to, to George O'Leary? This is George O'Leary's football. That passing stuff is nice, and they better work. But when you get down in there, as he said, to, hey, the Doc Bunch, we better push this one in and get it in there, run it in there. Boy, is he tough coach. Charles Hill is down and shaken up for Maryland, perhaps cramping as well. And it's exactly what is his situation. They look at the nose man from Palmer Park, Maryland, Baltimore suburb most experience on this uh, front line the most consistent defensive lineman we're all even at 14 with 820 left here is our Miller High Life storyline tonight seven turnovers in this game five by Georgia Tech George Godsey's numbers keep getting better it doesn't look like he's had a 300 yard passing game but he's getting there Tech as you see has mainly thrown the ball on scoring drives but in the second half, Georgia Tech's offense is taking over. Remember, this is an offense that Ralph Friedgen designed, was the coordinator of for four years, and he's, he said something very interesting. He said, I put on the film to watch Georgia Tech, and I'm watching my offense. And I'm watching my offense score 70 against Navy and 44 in the loss to Clemson, 37 against Duke. And I'm also coaching against my friend, George O'Leary. They've known each other for 20 years since they were recruiting in New York together sharing a meal because O'Leary had a better budget to eat on the road while recruiting. Gotsu is sacked. That's Randy Starks and Duran Roundtree and Michael Whaley and the fourth sack of the night for Maryland. The important part about that sack is it took him out of field goal range and the wind is blowing in the face. They collapsed the pocket round got see he didn't get a chance to throw it up but I would right now make sure that I get enough of a pass completion Kirk that I could kick a field goal if necessary I wouldn't go for the whole thing I wouldn't go for the touchdown great play by the freshman Starks there Manje's long field goal career is 47 yards from here it would be a 52 yarder Godsey's toss it is caught shy of the first down but there you go coach Kelly Campbell's reception will make it a 39 40 yard field goal attempt now most of the time I would go for it but right now I would try to win the game with a field goal because my defense is playing so well now he might go for it and that's fine but I'm telling you I would kick the field goal and get ahead 17 14. 
I'm gonna go for it. Okay, good. I'm first guessing. Understood. Never, never second guess. Yeah, no second I'm guess, guys. Only first guess. Thursday night, it's all about first guess. Right? That's right. Tex made a couple of fourth downs tonight. Trying to draw them off. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. They're going for the field goal. Godsey takes the timeout. When we come back, likely a field goal attempt to put Georgia Tech ahead. They've missed one from the right hash already tonight. Ten real people, each with one true passion. As everyday people rise to a once-in-a-lifetime challenge, stretching reality to the ultimate. Oh, we bit the back of the boat. They're ten real people living out their one true passion. I wanted to jump out of airplanes. Dance on the Giza Plateau. I'm going to hit them with everything it's I've got. It's the coolest thing I've ever done. I just want to complete the race. On Ultimate Reality. All new episode, Thursday at 10 p.m. on a and &E. Talks at Home High Speed Cable Internet Service will make you smile. It's always on, so you never have to dial up to connect. And it's lightning fast, so you can fly from site to site in no time. Plus, with fast professional installation, it's no wonder at home is the number one high speed cable internet service provider in the world. Cox at Home. The internet comes to life when it's at home. Get free installation with Cox at Home Quick Connect. Call 602-795-6701. Saturday, Florida's Heisman Hungry Rex Grossman and the Gators take on Auburn. College football Saturday, Florida, Auburn, 745 Saturday on ESPN. Saturn is working to keep our economy strong. In jobs, in commerce, and in spirit. As part of that effort, we're providing interest-free financing on every new coupe, sedan, and wagon we make. Come visit your Saturn retailer and keep America rolling. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you in part by Saturn, now with two distinctly different car lines, the L-Series and the S-Series. That touchdown by Jonathan Smith to start the fourth quarter, tied the game at 14, and now Luke Manje will come on to try a 40-yard field goal. The music aficionado plays guitar, violin, banjo, and the mandolin. With sweet music for Georgia Tech to put them ahead 17-14. Monjay the field goal to put him on top. Out of the hold of Hal Higgins. What a story this kid is. His first year back playing, he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease a couple of years ago in the hospital. When they were first diagnosing his illness, he told his dad he didn't think he was going to make it through the night. Had 105 fever. They diagnosed it. 14 sessions of chemotherapy ended in December of 99. He worked around the football office last year. Had a 4-0 GPA. Came back to the team. Was a punter, a backup punter. They got him in as a holder. He's done a great job holding this year. And as we know, the snap holding kicker equally is important. Right. But Hal Higgins has done his job on the field. And what a thrill it is for Hal to be on the field and to be a part what of this a great team. Story. Yeah. It's a great. great story. A very important part. Interesting part about that drive, Mike. 58 yards, five runs, seven passes. Nice balance yes. to get that field goal. After all the passes. Exactly. On the other two score drives. The they, got them, they got them loosened up, got them loosened up, then they ran. Well, let's see what Maryland can do here because its offense has scored just once despite being in Georgia Tech territory six times tonight. Remember, the defense is the other score. Significant in the ACC, but you guys will be there for college game day presented by Discover Card as they play Miami. And then they'll get back to the conference wars, try to bounce back from that loss to North Carolina. Thank you for voting at ESPN.com. We're home for college football on the internet. From the 20, Hill starts with play action. Nearly intercepted. Ricardo Winbush was covering the fullback James Lynch. And Hill slowed to get up. 
Now, this time, the quarterback did get hit. I made a mistake of that last one, but I'm telling you. <laughs> this time you promise? I promise you, Sean Hill got hit. Now, remember I made a mistake before, but watch this one. Up. I you got, got it right. You got I got one out of two. That's 50%. Greg Gavin's hit him. It's Whoa, almost man. like seeing a different defense the way Georgia it. Tech is flying around right now. Second and ten. Pass is caught by Jafar Williams. Five to the 25. Marvius Hester with the coverage. Remember what Jerry told us guys coming out of the locker room at halftime? Ted Roos, the defensive coordinator, his fourth year here, to change the philosophy. No switching around. We're going to stay, call it, stay in that defense. And they have played better. Is that a reason? Yeah, they've Absolutely. been in the lock in. You're, you haven't seen a mental mistake since Don told us about that report. And since Georgia Tech has been sitting in their defense and not trying to outthink themselves. Paralysis through analysis. It could hit people when you start thinking too much on defense. Third and five. Will they bring it? Pressure coming. Hill gets away. And throws complete to the 34 and Jafar Williams. That's a good hard throw on the run. Nice play. Sean Hill, I think, continues to impress all of us up here watching. A lot of pressure on that third down. He felt the pressure coming up the middle. Gathers also coming from the outside. He's able to avoid that pressure, not only avoid it, right when it looked like he was just going to throw it away, he finds his open man, Jafar Williams. The way this game is going, this may be the second to last or last opportunity for Maryland with the ball. The 34, pump and go long. Now go down. Hill is sacked by Gather. <laughs> Moving Greg gathers all around. Here he moves from the outside, comes down into the inside as a defensive end, and that stunt confused Maryland up front, and he came scot free. Second and 18. The clock is going downhill really fast. Four and a half to go. Pressure, second and down. This time, Rogers. What happens a lot of times, you get in the fourth quarter, that offensive le left tackle, C.J. Brooks. Remember I told you what a great job he was doing? 6'5", 3'11". He's getting tired. He's getting tired, and his feet quit moving. You notice the reason why Gathers got around him that time <laughs> is that old Brooks couldn't move his feet fast enough. Athlete type. Yeah. Athlete got around him. Nick Rogers is a tremendous athlete. C.J. Brooks, a red shirt freshman. Yeah. Good got, a, got, a, got a lesson there. Third and a quarter of the field. They try a screen to get some back with Perry. Got one block. Not going to go anywhere else. Hit hard at the 25 by Fred Wright. Backup defensive tackle. Maryland will punch it away with 3.30 to go. Georgia Tech numerically has played well all night. But we're seeing a different defense right now. They have applied this kind of pressure on Sean Hill the entire evening. They're playing at a different level, different intensity level. That one got back there, waffling to Brooks Bernard. Gets off a good kick. Rhino, the 27. Jerome Cox hit him. And got some company to pull him down at the 45-yard line. The punt was 48. The return was 8. Georgia Tech's defense has gotten the job done. 3.02 to go. Tech by three. Even when a man has his toolbox handy, isn't it nice to turn to this all-purpose helper? The High Life man knows that if the pharaohs had duct tape, the Sphinx would still have a nose. We salute you, duct tape. You help a man get to Miller time. You're at a stoplight. You're making a turn. You're pulling into traffic. There are a lot of reasons every 2002 Saturn L series comes standard with head curtain airbags. Those 
are just a few. The Saturn L series. Get 0% APR financing on all Saturn models. For restrictions, see your retail. Football Saturday. Heisman hopeful David Carr and Red Hot Fresno State try to keep their BCS hopes alive in a showdown with Colorado State. College Football Saturday. Fresno State. Colorado State. 10 o'clock Saturday on ESPN2. This is Rich Eisen. Later on Sports Center, the Mariners look to the long ball to try and even the series with Cleveland. After three years, number 23 makes his return to the court. The Yankees call on their top lefty to right the ship for the Yanks. Join me and Chris Berman after the game. Back in Midtown Atlanta, Georgia, on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. 18 remaining unbeaten in Division 1A. Maryland is one of the two that have matched or exceeded the win total from last year. That's why Ralph Fried is getting so much attention and credit going up against his best buddy in coaching, George O'Leary. They've known each other for 20 years. They battle here for the next three minutes. Burns a first down run. Kept going, he got five to the 40. Now, I'm not second guessing, but I'm first guessing. I'm telling you, if I was Georgia Tech, I would not throw the football. I would force Maryland to use it three timeouts. I would not have a chance for a turnover. All backs running with would carriage hold two hands, then I'd punt it and I'd let that defense you talked about play yep. with yep. a long field. I just would took the not first time out. Just yeah. the first I'd time make out. them use three. See? And then I sure. would whatever they do, don't throw the football. I don't care what. Just keep putting the football in the hands of number 35. <laughs> 35 knows what to do with it. Finish the thought of Ralph Region and the turnaround here at Maryland. 18 remaining division one on beat with one A. Maryland has equaled last year's win total with five. Washington State has exceeded the win total from last year. Cougars won four. They are 5-0 and oh as well. But it's really an impressive turnaround because, as I mentioned, 17 starters came back. It wasn't like there were you know, a whole bunch of players who were sitting around who hadn't been here before. And all the little things are starting to add up. And I don't mean this disrespectfully. You have to remember that Ron Vanderlinden, who was the coach, did recruit these guys. So they did a good job of identifying talent, getting them to College Park. Whatever was missing, these ingredients of this coaching staff have come together and have put Maryland in line for a bowl game this year. You know, if Maryland ends up losing this football game, the way they played tonight, they can still walk out of here with a lot of confidence for the rest of the year in the ACC. Second and six. Burns is hit by Henderson. Maryland takes the quick timeout. Back here at the 243 mark. We lost a few yards. It's third and seven. Third and eight, actually, coming up. The first oil filter ever made back in 1923 wasn't called an oil filter. It was called a Purilator. Today, every car on the road relies on technology pioneered by Purilator. And the same company that invented the oil filter just keeps reinventing it. So that for anyone who cares enough to change their own oil, Pure Later continues to mean pure oil then, pure oil now, pure oil later. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. It becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. Reminder to those of you around the country who have ESPN News, as soon as the game ends, you need to stay on ESPN for Sports Center or hop over to News. We'll have post game coverage of Georgia Tech, Maryland. We'll break it down for you. Live and in color. Ah, I'm breaking it down. 
Preston Reddy. Serious football. Third and eight. They need to get to the 46. Will they throw? Oh, they will. Quick pass. Caught by Glover. First down. I tell you what. That, ladies and gentlemen, was a magnificent call going against percentages. If that thing would have popped up and they fell and they got it, it would have been all over. That was one sensational call by Bill O'Brien and George O'Leary. Great call, great execution. Oh. Oh. We've seen this route all night long. It's man coverage. Again, it's a pick. It's a pick route. We're going to call it a rub route. We're going to see these guys in a couple weeks. That's a rub route. <laughs> Came underneath there and picked up the first down. Good call, coach. Maryland, one time out left. Georgia Tech is a first down away from closing this out. Burns gets nothing. Terrapin will take the time out here at the 2.08 mark. Step out for a half minute. Second and 10 when you come back. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life. The first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines, Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. Back in Atlanta, Ralph Friesen, the architect of this Georgia Tech offense that was really cruising along with Joe Hamilton. George Godsey picked up right where it left off last year. Well, this offense in the second half has gone with a lot of passing because they couldn't establish a run. What they've done is they've kept the ball away from Maryland. The defense has helped a lot. But in this game, Georgia Tech has run 80 plays to Maryland 62. And you wouldn't have thought that by watching the first 20 minutes of the game. You're right about that. And I think Georgia Tech fans, remember, you go back to the beginning of the game, they're booing the offense and Bill O'Brien. Need to have patience with Bill O'Brien. First time he's had to call plays here at Georgia Tech. He's going to just keep getting better and better. Second down, a play pass. Actually, just got some keeper, and he is taken down by the freshman Randy Starks. Maryland out of timeouts. So the clock will run. Of all the plays Bill O'Brien called today, that last pass play was brilliant call. You see, the clock is stopping here. The officials from the back came up here. Because it didn't start. Didn't start on time properly? Exactly. Okay. It Fans. got stuck. Yeah. And that usually doesn't happen at home. It usually happens when you're on the road. That clock operator is your best friend. Please change the clock to reflect one minute, 59 yeah. seconds. Seven seconds. It's enough. Down. Seven seconds is enough. Down. Clock operator, his buddies are free. Trying to help out his little buddy. <laughs> it better not be, or he won't be working Joking. on the clock next week. And now they reset it and wind it uh, with the 25-second play clock. So this play will have to be snapped at the 133 mark. Georgia Tech just okay. getting the huddle. They call That's quick plays. Thing. Maryland with defensive confusion. 11 on the field here. Burns left side. Go down. Don't get that sideline. Oh. 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 Yeah. Don't no. come running off by George O'Leary either. No. But Joe Burns has had a very good night. Just trying to get those him. extra yards. Look at George. I think the offensive line should protect their running back right now. <laughs> See, what they did is they, they lost 30 seconds there. Sure did. Oh. At least. At least 30. Yeah. So, I mean, that is absolutely a disaster. Oh, Look at him. Run. Oh, hey, pat him on the back. All right, we'll take care of that. <laughs> As a coach, is this is this the time of the game? That this... no, it's... Do you go after the punt? Oh, absolutely. Have to. Have to. Maryland's block two this year. Good punt protection. Julian Gary let it bounce. 80 yards, no timeout, 78 seconds. Can you do it? We'll find out with Sean Hill. Like you mentioned, 80 yards. 80 yards gets you a win. That's it, thank you. They get, you know, maybe they pick up uh, 
60 yards, uh, 50 yards. Well, I've seen Maryland twice I've seen already this kicker. year. You get a shot, no, but no. I'm counting on them not no, taking no, a field no. goal. That's right. Well, you never know. You yes. never know. <laughs> Novak has kicked nothing. In fact, the That's last right. time they had a chance to kick a field goal, they faked it. That's yeah. not a good sign. Gary is their possession receiver, Jafar Williams, number 19. Is their receiver that can get upfield. Tech rushes three, covers with eight. Pass is caught by Jafar Williams. Didn't get a first down, clock runs. This is where a Ralph Friedgen team usually is well-schooled. See how they can operate here. They stopped it because the referee had a check if it was a first down or not. The umpire shouldn't stand over the ball. You, you don't need to be there. The clock was wrong. They didn't start the play clock. Had wasted seven seconds on the officials. Horrible job. Pass caught first down. Clock will stop at the 35. Make sure when you're at home, you're not supposed to have. Maybe, maybe the guys running the clock's friends with Ralph Friedgen. That's what I said. Time. He's moving to Maryland next week, though. Yeah. That was the officials. They were waiting to start the play clock, but the game clock was running. Yeah. Comes my guy. From the 35, Perry needs to get out of bounds. Gained only a yard. Stops the clock with 40 seconds. Chris Berman, Rich Eisen, Sports Center, as soon as we're done here. 33 yards is his long. Novak. Against so Virginia last week. You get to that 16-yard line, you got a shot. Realistically, I don't think they can get, get to get the 16-yard line if Georgia Tech wasn't even out there. You got to get to the 25. Give him a shot. And about 40 yards to go. Again, oh, three-man rush. Uh oh down to the 46 to Julian Gary. Clock stops. 33 seconds. Nice throw by Hill there. Oh. The gathers was right in his face. That was a beautiful pass. See, here they go. Clock stops. Lined up. Everything's done perfectly here. Up to the 46. Hill moves to his right. Got to get rid of it. Threw it away. And incomplete. 22 seconds left. Now, the interesting thing here for coaching the quarterbacks, that if he does complete a long pass, it's a first down, they need to snap the ball and throw it down to stop the clock. Because remember, they have no timeouts. So if they complete a pass for the first down, line up, throw it down, and then make a decision what kind of play you want to use. Realistically, 20 more yards gives him a shot. Yeah. Yeah. He'll go. Sure. Novak has the leg. He's just young and has no confidence right now. Four-man rush this time. Incomplete. 15 seconds left. And Maryland sits atop the ACC, a place they haven't been in a very long time, with a 3-0 conference record. But as you see, six teams are lined up with one loss there. So if Georgia Tech hangs on, we're going to have seven teams with one loss in the conference. Two weeks, we get a chance to see North, North Carolina, Carolina and Georgia right Tech. Yes, this will be another to... great ACC game here on Thursday night. Remember, if, if, if they get close enough, it is a field goal with the win. That's right, Lee. Slight wind in his back. Slight wind in his back. That gives him an extra five or ten yards. Fifteen seconds left. Hill needs to hit one downfield. It's complete for a first down at the 28. So Rich Parson, the freshman, seven seconds now left. Now going to fire the ball into the ground. Fire the ball the into the ground. Fire it into the ground and kick a field goal. See, see how quick the offensive line is set yeah, up? They, they're well coached. Yeah, they really are. Dropped it back to the 29-yard line. Wound ready for play. Down the ball, five seconds left. From here, it's well, a 46-yard field goal. He's got to try it. Yep, and on comes Nick Novak, who won the job from the senior, Vidad Silkovic. He said he has to make them from 40 yards and in. He has the leg to make it from there. This one's a little bit long. Applaud the job there by Sean Hill and the Turks, oh. their offense. Remember what Nick Rogers and Greg Gathers had done the previous series and how dominating they were. That was That's big right. time to just to give Maryland a chance here at this 46-yard field goal. Uh, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll freeze like them. Yep. I didn't think they could do it. I got You got to give them credit for the offensive line, as you said. But now you know what's going to happen? Everybody's going to second-guess Ted Roof from playing the old Ben, 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 Ben defense. The nickel prevent. Why? Why wouldn't you do the same thing you do? I, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. You see Ralph Friedgen there. Here's what Ralph told me last night about Nick Novak. He said 
the kicker, I've been giving him grief. Come on, you gotta do, you gotta get it done. You gotta make put pressure on him in practice. Made them do up down drills if their timing wasn't good enough. Yeah. And then Ralph said, you know what, I gotta lay off the kid a little bit. He kicked better against Wake Forest, better against Virginia. So Novak on Wednesday night at dinner said to Freegian, coach, how come you're not giving me grief anymore? And Ralph said, well, maybe I need to just leave you alone because I was giving you grief and you weren't kicking well. You performed better. So now I'm going to leave you alone. You know what? Kickers are like relief oh, yeah. pitchers. You, you get their psyche. They're, they're so sensitive. You have to be careful with them. This was his earlier attempt from 32 yards in the right hash. Now remember, on this kind of a field goal, you need to rush in the middle and try to block it because a field goal kicker, sidewinder, that's kicking a long one has a tendency to kick it low. So if they block this kick, they'll block it up the middle. See all those linemen, all the gladiators who've been battling for four quarters. Now you rely on a kicker to try to tie it again from 46 yards. Online and it is good! And we are going overtime! What a kick! I was wrong! <laughs> I didn't think he'd ever get that far. I told dude. you, don't count out my man. All right, no back! Coming through! Nick Novak's no longest field goal of his young career oh. by 13 yards sends us to OT in Atlanta. Oh. <laughs> Can you believe it? We have a coin toss coming up. Hill took the Terps 51 yards in 78 seconds. And Nick Novak, 4 of 11 kicking field goals this year. The red shirt freshman from Charlottesville could have made that from 50. <laughs> He's been worked hard by Ralph Friedgen for a month and a half. That hard work and a little grief paid off. And Ralph Friedgen coming to coach against his old buddy oh, says, man. bring on a fifth quarter when you come back to Atlanta. Hey, Arizona, budget car and truck sales says don't downsize budget ties. If your budget would force you into a lesser vehicle at a new car dealership, get what you really want at budget. Buy a Taurus for the price of a Focus, a Caravan for the price of a Stratus, and pay just zero down in $99 a month this weekend. Drive a 2001 Ford Taurus for only $13,995 or a 2001 Dodge Grand Caravan, just $17,995. At budget car and truck sales, don't downsize. Budget ties! It's what smart people do when they buy a car! Hello. Everyone knows his voice. Is this Clarice? Ah, uh, hello, Clarice. Everyone knows his name. Good evening. Dr. Lecter. And everyone knows... I'm giving very serious thought... What he's hungry for. To eating your wife. Hannibal on pay-per-view. Hannibal. Read it R. Order it on pay-per-view. Tune in to see Hannibal on Cox Cable. The last bastion of brotherhood. A world where strangers pass each other's food, drink, and hard-earned cash. Where a simple beer man hands off a frost-brewed Coors Light, trusting not a drop of Rocky Mountain refreshment is lost along the journey. Hand to hand, man to man, until it reaches its rightful owner. Hey, beer man, where's the rest of my Coors Light? <coughs> Fellas, have you no shame? Disbelief, George Gotze, he'll have to take some more snaps in overtime on College Football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. It was 14-0 Maryland. Georgia Tech scored 17 points, had the lead, and Sean Hill brought Maryland down the field. Nick Novak kicked the field goal oh, <laughs> to force overtime. Oh, ye of little faith, as they said to me. I never, I never thought that they could drive that far against the way Tech's defense is playing. And now the second guessing will come on Ted Roof. Why did you go to the prevent defense and give him so much of a cushion? That's the question. Well, you can second guess Georgia Tech all you want. Give Maryland credit. Oh, yeah. Point toss here for OT. Part of the deal, you gotta hit that button, right? Maryland calls it. You wanna go defense? Oh, go offense, you got to always do. You're gonna play down here, you go defense here. 
especially at home. the ball going that way away from the student section by the way you heard the uh, obvious choice you have choice of offense defense or end of the field each team one possession from the opponents 25 no game clock only the play clock you have to go for two if we get to triple overtime 33 overtimes in 2000 average one and a half period so somewhere between a one or a double overtime game every team that won the toss as Georgia Tech here did here last year sure. chose defense mm -hmm. and they won 22 of the 33 games you know Joe Burns let's not forget he ran out of bounds and that 30 seconds <laughs> left on the clock gave Maryland a little more time to get down the field mistake that Joe Burns typically would never make right That's something you usually don't see from him Maryland ball first to start our first go to Pick up first downs. It's like a drive. We'll start with the option with Hill. Nothing. That's Mitchell, who was a fullback last week because of injury to Daryl Smith and Aether Brown, who's the starting middle linebacker and has played here tonight. Although Bruce Perry's dinged up tonight, I think they try to get the football in his hands. Whether he's slipping out of the backfield, maybe in one on one coverage. Or, the, or they've had a lot of success throwing the football to Gary. Yeah, well. but don't forget that reverse play somewhere there. They scored a touchdown with that reverse play. Second down. Maybe we'll use that wide side of the field here with a throw. Here is Hill throwing. Complete to the 11-yard line. Julian Gary, first down. They can pick up another first down at the one. Gary comes into tonight's game, their leading receiver, and he doesn't have big playability, lightning speed, but I'll tell you what he does have is a savvy to find a hole in zone coverage. He's done it time and time again tonight, and he continues to come up with a big catch for the touch. Now 18 carries on the night for 49 yards. Like your Kirk, this is exactly the same spot where they ran that reverse play off the option for a touchdown. I'll guarantee if I'm going to check, I'm watching somebody for some kind of a trick play, especially for the jerk. Exactly the same spot. And you know what? Number one is in the same position as he was. Same formation, Liz. Same formation. Second and 11. Terry covered as a receiver. Hill's looking for somebody to break free. Throws it up and out of the back of the end zone. Now third and 11 for the first down. 12 for the touchdown. In Georgia Tech's last game here in Atlanta, two weeks ago against Clemson, they went overtime and Clemson won it with a touchdown, 47-44, after Tech had the ball first and kicked a field goal. On a quarterback draw. By Woodrow Dantzler. They wouldn't run a quarterback draw now, would they? No. Okay. Georgia Tech has lost its last two overtime games, the Clemson game this year, and last year on Thursday Night Football to North Carolina State. Gary's up at the top. To Perry. Made one man miss, couldn't make any more miss. It'll be from the right hash, a 26-yard field goal attempt after Fred Wright's tackle. Now, here's the tough thing for Novak. He just sent the game into overtime. He's a hero. Everybody's coming over, patting him on the back. He's not known for being a consistent kicker. Now he's got to come back. Wait a minute. And I know it's a short kick. I know. Wait a minute. But now you're he's not, you're come not back and hit it. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm just saying there's a little bit. What do you think he's going to make it? I'm not saying if he's going to make it. I'd say I bet you he makes it. He's going to make it. All right. Brooks Bernard holds. I mean, right in the middle. Right through. I mean, like Jan Stenerud. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> All the torture that Ralph gave him, <laughs> Khalid Nin. I mean, Whatever he's doing, I mean, he's working. Split the, split the, right <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> Maryland 20, Georgia Tech 17. What a game. A field goal sends us to a second overtime. A touchdown wins it. 
no score, Maryland stays undefeated. I can't believe you